Welcome back everyone, Tina here and in this video today I'm going to show you how you can set up a holiday workflow. A holiday workflow is a workflow which notifies the customer immediately, hey sorry we're on holiday, we're back in office this date and this time once they contact you, okay? So the contact can happen through the website either via the contact form, maybe they fill out some survey, maybe they click the chat button on your website, anywhere where you have a contact me option that can be fully automated and you can let the customer or prospect know hey, we won't be able to reply right away because ta-da, it's Christmas Day or it's New Year's Eve Day, it's Martin Luther King Day, whatever holiday it is, you can now automate the full thing for the entire year as well. You just need to build it once. It takes about 15 minutes to implement and then you've set it and you can forget it. So let's build this out real quick. Of course, we want to click on automations on the left and no workflows at the top. We want to create a new workflow and then click start from scratch. In this case, I've already pre-built the workflow, so I'll walk you through it. All right, so as the trigger, let's start at the trigger. Don't worry about the rest right now. As the trigger, as I said, right, contacted via website or filled out form in this case. So you would, for example, type form, form submitted, then you would select the form, form is, then select the form in question and hit save trigger, okay? So this way the system knows, okay, when somebody requests any information through the website, but it's a public holiday and we're not available, then the entire workflow will trigger. Okay, there's many different holidays in the calendar in the year. For this example, we're just going to take two examples, two holidays. Okay, so first you want to add the action set event start. You just click the plus here, you type event and then you select set event start date. That's the action you have to select. Okay, once you do that, you're asked to select a type. So here we want to select a specific date and time and you want to select, let's say, 1st of January. Okay, because that's obviously a public holiday or nobody's working then. So select 1st of January and down here, you can also select a time, let's say 11 a.m. And then you would just hit save action. Okay. So that's the block we've just built. So this is the same block as the second block right here. So I'm going to delete what I've just shown you because it's exactly the same thing. And as you can see here, I've changed the action name to, hey, 1st of January 24 at 10 a.m. Okay. Hit save action. Next up would be to add a wait step. That's the second action right here. So let me walk you through that. We renamed the action step New Year's Day 24 plus wait one hour, which makes it 11 a.m. Okay. So here in the drop down menu for wait for, you would select event and appointment time, which means you wait until before or after event start time or appointment time. Okay. Then we want to select before and we want to type one hour, which makes it then 11 a.m. Because here in the first step, we have selected 10 a.m. Okay. Then we want to keep skip all outbound communications selected and hit save action. All right. And then we want to start our communication here. We send our email, SMS or WhatsApp message, whatever you prefer. However, they communicate, right? Like if they send an email then you want to send an email back, if they send a WhatsApp message through the chat bubble on your website, then you want to send a WhatsApp message back. For example, you just add here your subject line and then your text and you're good to go. Okay. Now, this is the first public holiday, right? So here, just for an example, I've added a second public holiday, which is after the first one. So I can show and demonstrate to you a lot better now in a minute that if the event start date has already passed, which it has, 1st of January 24 has already passed. So if I come in as the client in the front end, I'm not receiving that email for, hey, happy new years because now it's not happy new years, right? But maybe now it's Martin Luther King's day and I'm coming in exactly then then the workflow will automatically register, okay, today is this date, we are not in the 1st of January 24, but it's Martin Luther King's day, and therefore we are going to skip January 1st, if that makes any sense. So what you would do here is just add a simple wait step, okay? So you would add the wait step, same scenario as above, you could actually just copy that action. Event and appointment time would be the selection under wait for, okay? Just exactly the same thing. But here, we want to wait 20 days and one hour. Why? Because at the beginning, we have set the start event date to 1st of January 2024, okay? Since the Martin Luther King Day is on the 20th of January, I put 25 here, just ignore that, it can also be 24, right? Point is, it's 20 days after the set start event date. So we put 20 days plus one hour because we want to send it at 11 a.m., not at 10 a.m. Does that make sense? So you would also keep skip all outbound communications here and then send your email for Martin Luther King's Day. And then you just want to go ahead and keep building out this workflow for all the public holidays in your country. And you just set and forget it. Like the whole year is planned out. You would just go here, click the three dots, click copy, copy all actions from here. 
and you would click here, copy here. Now you can see this has been copied. All you got to do is just edit the dates. Let's say there is another public holiday, let's say on the 29th of January. Okay. Then we would need to wait 29 days because the start date is set to 1st of January. And 29 days after the 1st of January, that would be another public holiday, for example, right? So here we want to put 29th and that's it. Oh, the description is too long. Let's just delete that and hit save action. Then here you would also want to edit that email, of course, and edit your subject line and the body, hit save action and that's it. Okay, let's hit save top right corner. Now let me show you in real life how that works. Let's test this workflow. Let's click test workflow top right. Let's send ourselves an email, click run test. Let's click on enrollment history. And here I am in the current action, which is the January 29th holiday. So this is where the system has added me because the 1st of January has already passed, but this event is going to happen in the future. Okay, it's far out in the future, but it's the only holiday we've added to the workflow. So if there's any other holiday you've added to the workflow, which is before January 29th, 25th, then obviously I will be stuck in that action and I'll receive that email whenever it's time. This is also a very great function to learn about if you're running challenges or live events. I teach a lot of three-day challenges. So if you build out your content before the live event, which I highly recommend you to do, you don't want to be writing emails while you're also presenting live and all these things. So then you want to set and forget it as well and set your start date. Hey, my challenge start on this particular day, then wait an hour to send a reconfirmation, send some homework, send some preparation work, all of these kind of things. So it's a really cool feature and really cool tool to know specifically for the holidays as well. So now you can build out the entire holiday workflow for the entire year. One time you can set it and forget it and then set yourself a reminder for December at the end of the year to update this workflow in accordance to the new holiday dates for the new year. And that's it. This is how you build the holiday workflow. I hope you liked this video and I will see you in the next one.